Welcome back. Well, how's this for an alarming statistic? One in four young Australians suffers from a mental health issue. Now, many experts believe this constitutes a crisis and alarmingly, the situation appears to be only getting worse. So why is this the case? Well, we took to the streets to ask you for your thoughts. I suppose, you know, the use of technology is one thing that would greatly impact, you know, the difference when we were growing up compared to kids today. I think that often parents don't say no and so don't set boundaries. There's nothing that's actually substantial, so they have all these social media, there's all these different, there's always something going on, you know, in their world. It's possibly the pressures of modern day society with uh, expectations of study and that sort of thing that's on them at the moment. Parents are talking about too many things that kids don't need to hear about, like the family pressures, that the finances that they're under. Bullying, I think it's a big part of it today. There's not enough interaction, the old school engagement, you know, parents talking to their children face to face, everyone's locked in their room watching TV or on their phones non-stop. Well, wow, some really insightful responses there. And while we know there is no one cause for mental illness, for today's agenda, we're asking why is it that so many of our children are struggling? Can we raise our kids to be resilient and ultimately help them lead happy, fulfilling lives to deal with life's inevitable disappointments and challenges? Our guest this morning has set out to teach kids exactly how to do that, not just kids, adults as well. And I'm really thrilled to welcome him back, the founder of the Resilience Project, Hugh van Kylenberg. Hugh, good morning again. Thanks for having me, Georgie. Um, I, I, as you know, from the minute I met you, I just thought you made enormous sense about all of this. And as you know, we've kept in contact ever since. So I thought it was timely to get you back on because this is at crisis level and it's not going away. Do you, do you know, just on those statistics that were up on the screen, um, Resilient Youth Australia have just released their latest statistics into... Now, they've surveyed 300,000 and profiled 300,000 kids over the last three years. Their latest statistics actually tell us it's 40% um, of secondary school kids now have a mental health issue. Uh, and it's 24.8% of primary school kids now with a mental health issue. So uh, it's getting a lot worse. And, and is that... Um predominantly anxiety is that sort of the... anxiety is the most common okay. mental illness for young people okay. yeah, currently so what is the root of that where is that coming from do you think from your experience oh, you, you could discuss this for hours for me personally um, the thing that stands out to me is I feel like with devices and social media I think I heard someone say the other day um, we've never been so connected yet we've never been so lonely um, I, I think the connections that young people make they're not as real uh, I don't know about you but I am so grateful I grew up before devices and social media and all those things. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I, we were just um, coming into the iPad when my kids were toddlers, and I'm just grateful that I got in a few years before they they sort of had access to it. Yeah. Um, w explain why we should be so concerned about anxiety. What does it really mean? So anxiety, um, anxiety disorder, uh, really, really common, especially with adolescent girls. It is an overwhelming amount of obsessive, negative, worrying thoughts that you find very, very hard to switch off. It is such a crippling, debilitating uh, mental illness and it is so unbelievably common. I, um, and again, you could discuss the reasons for this for a long time. For me, um, this statistic really speaks volume to this. Now, I, I, um, when I, now, when people hear this, it's gonna be quite, you know, it's gonna be quite a surprise, but when I think about it, over, when the viewers think about it over the next, 24, 48 hours, it, it actually isn't that big of a surprise. How's this? In the year 2018, it's predicted that the adolescent and child brain will receive the same amount of information in a week that our brains used to receive uh, in a whole year. Wow. There is just so much going in. Wow. There is so much going in. And suffice to say, it's impossible to, to cope with. Yeah, and we're so addicted to these devices, so we can't just say to our kids, get off your phone, because it's like saying to an alcoholic, stop drinking. It, you know, we're addicted to these things. Mm. I want you to take our viewers back to, to where this all began for you. Yeah. Uh, you, you. You study teaching, you're over in India, I think from memory on a cricket tour, and yeah, you, yes. you got access to a little school yeah. in northern India. Tell our viewers what happened. Yes, yeah, so I was travelling India and it was, um, yes, I'm a school teacher and I found myself a few weeks into the trip missing the classroom, which kind of caught me by surprise to be honest. But, um, and I decided to, find, to, uh, to spend a few weeks teaching um, and volunteering. Um, it was 10 years ago, so that, that explains my hair hopefully. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I found myself in the classroom and I, find, and I found a school to go and volunteer in. The school had, well, the community I lived in had no running water, no electricity, no beds. Everyone slept on the floor. You can see there we are right in the middle of the desert. And I remember when I was teaching there, um, and, and I'll come back to that picture in a minute, but um, 
Uh, I, I remember thinking, my gosh, these people are so unbelievably happy. And one boy in particular, the boy who was up on the screen before, uh, I remember just being blown away by his levels of... Um, he was so full of joy. And I remember thinking, I've never seen anything like this. And then on my last night, uh, well, what was meant to be my last night in the community, um, I remember, without going into the details fully, I remember discovering that this boy slept on a dirt floor um, and I couldn't sleep that night. And I remember thinking, uh, yeah, this is the boy here, little stuns and his name is. And I was lying there, um, meant to be my last night, and I couldn't sleep. And the reason I couldn't sleep was I couldn't stop thinking about my little sister, Georgia. Um, when, Georgia's three years younger than me. When she was 14 years old, she was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. Um, there she is there. Um, and, it, and it ravaged her. Well, any, any of the viewers out there who have family or friends with a mental illness, they know it's not just the person these things ravage, it's everyone who's close. And what I'm trying to say is it ravaged our family, I mm. guess. Um, she almost died on quite a few occasions. Yeah, she dropped her, she dropped her crisis weight. Yeah. 18 years old, she's yeah. in hospital. There we are there, and she's a bit healthier. But um, 18 years old, she's in hospital. Fast forward a few years, I'm lying on a dirt floor in India, and I'm thinking, how is this possible? This kid here is, like, is, is sleeping on a dirt floor, and he lives in a community with no running water, no electricity, full of joy. My little sister, Georgia, grew up in Australia, loving family, nice enough home, um, went to, ha had really good education, all these things that we have every single day, yet she just found it so hard to be happy. And I remember thinking, well, I don't think I can leave here. I think I need to stay here, and I'm going to stay here. I know it was a long shot, but we were pretty desperate as a family. I'm going to stay here as long as it takes me to work out what does this kid do every day that makes him so happy? Mm -hmm. Could I talk to my sister about this stuff? But more than that, it was, what do these people do in this community? They're the happiest people I've ever met in my entire mm. life. And I think back to, I was thinking of so many people in Australia who struggle with wellbeing, and I thought, well, maybe I can learn something of them that I can talk to people in Australia about. So that's how it started 10 years ago. And you had that massive disconnect, and, and you stayed on, and you observed and you watched, and you came up with three key yeah. pillars, didn't you, that you observed that they adhered yeah. to every day? Yeah, so the three things these, there were three things this community stopped their day and practised every single day. And I remember thinking, this is it, this has got to be it. And I came back to Australia, I practised them, I came back to Australia, I wanted to tell everyone about it, but I knew I couldn't talk to educated, intelligent people and say, I saw people in India do it, so let's all just copy them. So I went back to India and, and, and I did my postgrad studies and I spent that time looking at the research that sat behind these three things. And it turns out there's 30 years of research screaming at us. When you practice these three things, your mental health improves, you become more resilient and, and, and basically you become happier. Mm -hmm. So tell them, yeah, tell us okay. what, what they are. <laughs> so the three things are gratitude, empathy and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Now I know everyone's heard of these things before. I'll give you a really quick little rundown of them. So gratitude is this, it's the ability to pay attention to what we've got, not to worry about what we don't have. Mm. So many people living in Australia live by this model of happiness called the if and then model of yeah. happiness. If I buy this iPad, then I feel happy. If yeah. I buy that car, then I feel happy. If my kids get this mark, you know, these marks I get into this course, yeah. then we'll feel happy. It doesn't work. So lose that. Be grateful for what you already have. Gratitude, yeah. We have so much here in Australia. Yeah. We have so much, but we're not very good at paying attention to the things we have. We miss them all the time. So gratitude's focusing on what you already have. OK. Empathy? Empathy. When you put yourself in someone else's shoes, you feel what someone else feels. This kid in India that I was speaking about, he's the one who really demonstrated that to me. He showed me what, um, you know, sleeps on a dirt floor yet. And now I can't say he's the happiest person I've ever met. I can't prove that. But I can say this by far, by far the kindest person I've ever met. Mm. Always doing things for people. Always, always think about it. I love compliments. It, how often do we think nice things about people but we don't actually go on and actually mm. say them? We think it, but we just, it's just a thought. Mm. If he saw, if, now, if he thought something nice, he'd just say it. Mm. Now, his compliments to me in English were often quite awkward because his English <laughs> wasn't great. In fact, on the last day, he said, he said to me, hey, sir, and I said, yes, and he said, you are very sexy today. And I said, no, 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 I did not, I did not teach you that. I did not say that. Um, but, yeah, so, but, but, but being empathetic, thinking beyond yourself, because the new, now, passion. Because the more empathetic you are, the more likely you are to act in a kind way. Yeah. The neuroscience behind kindness is extraordinary. Yeah. You do something nice for someone, your brain releases a hormone called oxytocin. Yeah. And oxytocin makes you feel good. It's known as a love hormone. Yeah. Um, so the kinder you are, the happier you are, in, yeah. in, uh, in essence. And he taught me that. And talk me through mindfulness, because it is a bit of a buzzword. Yeah, a, we think yeah. about colouring in. We get a little bit confused as to what that is. Yeah, Explain. this is my biggest challenge at the moment when yeah. I speak about mindfulness, because I feel like people get a little bit annoyed by it, because every corner you turn at the moment, someone is just screaming mindfulness at you. Yeah. Um, so I'll try and do it in a non-annoying way for all the viewers at home. It's, it's pretty simple. It's this. It's the ability to be calm. It's the ability to be present. Now, are we calm in Australia right now? No, we're not. The most common mental illness is anxiety disorder. 
the next time you're driving your car and you slow down to work out if you've got to turn right here or the next street and you inconvenience someone by half a second, you watch how people react mm. around you. We're just not calm, we're on edge. Mm. Um, are we present in Australia? No, we're not. The, the, we, we, we just, um, research says that we're only present for 15% of our day. Mm. And that's tragic when you consider the, the percentage of our day that we're with loved ones mm. and we're not actually in the present moment. Absolutely. So, so mindfulness is about, um, it doesn't have to be sitting there meditating like this, it, it's a whole range of different things and people can read up about it at home. Yeah. Um, but it's just about being in, actually in the present moment. I, I know we keep coming back to screens, but yeah. if there was one thing that you could get across to our audience this morning about how detrimental they are and how we as parents have got to lead the way on this, what, what would you say? Because I know you speak at conferences all around the country, um, you've been very involved with various sporting clubs and sp elite sports people. Um, what, what's, the, what's the overriding message that you would like to get across? Get off your phone. Just get off it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know it's a... It's a it's a bit of a throwaway line because we're actually quite addicted to these devices. And um, so I would say you, you need to get off your phone. There was an article in the paper over the weekend that talked about, it was, I can't remember the, the, the whole article, but, but basically it was, it was about uh, a, a surgeon or a doctor whose life it is to break the news to people that they're actually, that they have a terminal illness and, 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 and that they're gonna die. And he said the most common thing that people say to him as soon as they get that news is, I wish I spent more time with my kids. I believe the new version of that is going to be, I wish, when I, was, when I wish when I was actually with my kids, I wasn't on my device. We're going to look back in 20, 30 years, um, and we're going to, I heard Hamish Blake say this on a podcast um, recently, saying, I'm, I, I will make sure um, that when I look back on the time I had with my kids at the playground, I don't remember myself being on Instagram or Facebook. I was actually there. So be there when you're with your kids. Leave your phone in the car, um, leave it at home, be there with your kids because they are looking to you, they learn off you every second of the day, they're watching you to learn your facial expressions, your, you know, the way you respond to things, but we're not responding to them, we're just like this at the moment. So leave your device at home, leave in the car, you'll live without it and be there with your kids. It is, it is, the, it is the greatest gift you can give them. You are so eloquent. You I think me, I spoke very you quickly make, then, but You anyway. make me teary when you speak <laughs> because you make so much sense. And you're so passionate and you really are making a difference to young, young people. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Sorry, Sorry. you. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> but keep doing what you're doing and we'll keep spreading the word. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Judy. Oh, Sorry. 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 He always does this to me, Carl. He's so incredible. Wish I could do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Be a bit more mindful. For the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a magnificent guest. Terrific. Thank you for sharing yeah. your story so Great eloquently message. and beautifully. And, Georgia, beautiful interview. Mm. Really oh. beautiful. He, do, he, do, yeah. he does it all. Really lovely stuff. <laughs> that is good television. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it at home. Let us know. Mm.